Thank you for checking out a Center Point Church message. Our mission here is to help you take the next step in your relationship with God. We hope that this video accomplishes that and encourages you to live out your faith this week. Enjoy! All right. Hi, I'm Bob Tramp. And I'm Val Tramp. And we are very humbled, especially with that introduction, as we share our faith story today with you. Um, Val and I have similar faith backgrounds, believe it or not. We are both brought up going to church, baptized as infants, confirmed in the church. We uh, memorize the commandments and the prayers, and honestly, they're more meaningful to us now than they were back then. And we are grateful for the upbringing that we had in the church. Had to wear our little leisure suits when you were in third grade, buttoned up to the top that you can't believe your mom let you out looking like that. And uh, we both felt that the weight of wondering if we'd ever be good enough for God, I think is the way I put it. And, you know, like going to confession twice a year and getting your throat blessed and ashes and don't eat meat on Friday, and, and there was such a high bar when I was younger of, man, I don't know if I'm even hitting the mark for God. Yes, and after I graduated high school as a young adult, church was not on my radar at all. It was not a priority of mine. Um, eventually, I, I did get married, and I had a beautiful daughter, Megan, and that is when I went back to the church, basically just because I thought that's what I had to do for Megan, and so she should have to get baptized and have Sunday school and confirmation. And quite honestly, um, there were often times when I would drop her off at Sunday school and I would just take off and not even go to church. I'd go shopping, go get groceries, and then pick her up at the end of it again. So during this time of my life, I really didn't grow in my relationship with God or being an example for her in that aspect of our lives. And way back, I was a dairy farmer. Uh, me and my dad and brother had a farm and uh, got married, had two awesome sons, Justin and Brandon. And the good old milk and cows life, I worked long hours, 24-7 uh, basically, no family time. Um, the only time I really got to do anything with my little boys is I'd watch them sleep, I always said, because they went to bed at 7.30 and I came in from the barn at 8, so I'd watch them sleep for a while. Um, but basically, one thing we had to do as a family was to go to church, and it, it was just something I felt that we just had to do because the way we were brought up. And like Val, though, I was just missing that personal relationship with God and not really living out my faith. And so, yes, as each of our lives went on, faith really wasn't a priority. Um, I don't know about you. Maybe some of you know you, you do something you know you shouldn't, and then you do it again and again. And we were just conforming to habits of this world and partying and doing whatever felt good at the time, just living for the moment. And ultimately, both of our marriages went down the path of divorce. Yeah, and when Val and I fell in love and found each other, we ended up living together with the three kids and had three different confirmation classes at different churches, and we tried to make that transition of being a blended family as smooth as we could. Uh, but we were not always the best example to our kids at that point of our life in right living, uh, but we were very intentional in loving all three kids and trying to be that one connected family. So ultimately, we did find a church that we felt was for us at that time. Uh, we were married through that church, and we became involved in the church and grateful for many of the experiences that we did have during those years. But Val and I were very busy serving in many ways because I like to lead, so I basically jumped into this church, and we got caught up thinking more really about ourselves than what I was really doing for God's glory. I was elected president of council, and you know, you think you're all that, and basically I had to do my agendas and write out all the checks and pay for the snow removal, and it was more of I was just doing it for the title and for people to think I was cool more than I was actually serving God. And probably for me, my biggest heart change came on a mission trip 
that we took with this church to Biloxi. And uh, my good old friend Rod up there who passed away here a couple years ago, a great friend of mine, him and I, totally the trip was not what I thought. Um, little tip for anyone, my two stories are actually going to be on mission trips. And I fought going on them for 50 years. And you go down to a mission trip, I don't care where it is, and, and you always think, at least I did, that, that I'm going to help them and we're going to get in this van with 12 people and we're going to help these poor people. And on the way home, the poor people actually help you. They change how you think, how you act about God and everything. So basically, Rod and I walked across the street and we met a couple homeless guys and they had a one-string guitar and we were singing Christian songs. We even snuck them a couple Bud Lights out of the fridge that we got in, we got in trouble for. I, I just got to be honest about that. And, and they reached out, and of course, they're, you know, they're not dressed cool or nothing. And, and they had backpacks and sleeping bags. And we sang Christian songs together. I'll never forget this. They reached out, and I, they held our hand, and they said, we're all brothers in Christ, and we're all going to be in the same heaven. And I'll never forget that statement because I never even looked at it that way. And Rod and I decided on the way back to the house, we were going to give up our sleeping bags that we bought at Walmart for $89. And this guy's name was Brian. And the last night we were there, we slept on just a mattress, Rod and I, because we knew these homeless guys had our sleeping bags. And it was, it was very humbling. Quite an experience. Um, and we had been attending that same church for about 12 years. And during that time, in December of 2014, my parents had a very devastating house fire. Um, they both were seriously injured. We got the call in the early morning hours. And when we got there, my mom was in her pajamas with a blanket around her. And she was just praying just praying out loud with their eyes closed. And it struck me after they lived with us for several weeks. It was during this time that we talked about our faith with them and seeing my parents' faith during this tragic event and throughout their recovery and healing really made me question where am I at in my relationship with God? Yeah, that's so true. They had nothing, even his glasses were gone and his hearing aids were gone and we'd sit and pray about how grateful they were to have literally nothing and i knew i did not look to god or trust in god like my parents did and so this was a difficult season for bob and i and that is when we realized that we really needed a change in our spiritual life and that's when about this time of our life we were invited to ripon community church by actually attenders here chris and tim demaster and they didn't just ask me once. They, it was three or four times. Every time, in, in just a very caring way, they're like, hey, you know, you guys should check out our church. So I'm very stubborn. And, and we're living in Oshkosh, so Bal's like, you want to go to a church in Ripon? Yeah. <laughs> so we sure did. It was in the fall of 2015 when Bal and I decided to check it out. And we had a new awakening um, with praise music and the people and the genuineness, and, and we just loved attending RCC. Yeah, and it was there that we actually, now mind you, we're like 50, 51. I'm not saying who was older. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we actually began our relationship with Jesus at that time, and then we were baptized. And um, we have gone through so much refinement and spiritual growth over these past six years uh, and with this change, we are just so much, such a m much better example for our kids in living right and living out our faith. Um, having God in the center of our relationship as husband and wife, we as a couple have also grown much closer too. Yes, definitely. With the help of God, our willingness to grow and let him use us is where we really had to make that change. And we like to serve them. Um, back in Ripon, I went to the men's group and got to learn the Bible, which I, to be honest with you, I'm, I didn't really dig into the Bible when I was younger, and I got to learn from these guys. And through small group, like Aaron mentioned, through this church, we plugged into some small groups and sharing and learning. And 
just a whole different feel. This time around, it's just different. It's just, it's serving to glorify God and not really doing it for my own glory. Right, and I, I also got involved in different women's um, groups and, and studying the Bible. I finally actually just finished reading the Bible just a couple months ago for the first time ever. So, um, and now in 2019, we were blessed to be able to participate in a mission trip to Mission Lazarus in Honduras. And the leaders of this trip did a phenomenal job opening our eyes to the life in another country to life and, and how the Hondurans there at Mission Lazarus, they learned about their eternal worth and how God and faith were first and foremost throughout their entire day. Yeah, that was, again, like I said, my two biggest heart moments were mission trips. And this one to Mission Lazarus was just amazing just to realize how our faith allowed us to respect and love their people. And, and you're immersed in them there. They cook for you. You work with them on projects, and they're so different than us, but just relying on God every day that we go out to a pole shed of all places in Spanish and pray and hold hands and, and work with them, and they're so grateful of people. And, and I said to Val, it, it changes you because what we take for granted, they just pray every day that they can find a clean glass of water to drink to keep alive. And you just come home with such a different attitude towards life. Yeah, our faith, uh, we realized just how much our faith allowed us to learn how to respect and love people even when they are drastically different than us. Um, so at RCC, we also found that serving at church really helped us make great connections with other people too. I, we have met so many wonderful connections that we uh, are just so grateful for and people that we just admire so much and adore. Um, one of the best connections that we had was when we began to serve with the youth at RCC. At that time, Aaron was the youth pastor, and so that was the beginning of our relationship with Aaron and Sydney, and that led us to actually being a part of the launch team here at Centerpoint, which has been an amazing experience for both of us. And we've grown to learn our spiritual gifts and find ways to use them humbly, way different than how we did before, and not for our own self-righteousness, not looking for praise, but praising God through it all. If any of you ever felt like me, like the stork dropped you in the wrong place when you were born, like <laughs> if you don't like 20 degrees and you were grumbling already this morning, um, part of our history actually is 16 years ago, my wife and I, decided we were going to retire somewhere warm, so we bought some property and decided to make an international move to the country of Belize. But at that time, it was all about retirement. It was all about fun in the sun. It was all about our plan to just get away and keep our sandals on and avoid people and just retire on the beach. And I know many of you are asking, where the heck is Belize? So <laughs> there you go. That's what I did when he first brought this crazy idea up to me. Um, so our original plan, though, was to move in 2017. And as you see, that did not happen because here we're sitting here yet, going through another winter. Um, but God had a very different plan for us. Our Christian faith of actually following Jesus has allowed God to tell us that he has plans to use us in the future, even in retirement. So if we would have moved any sooner, we would, be, would have been in a drastically different place with God than we are now today. And as we look back at all the things that we've shared with you of how God has transformed us and prepared us over these past few years, we keep seeing him give us signs that although we may be retired, we won't be retired from serving him even on the beach, and nor would we want to be. So God willing, our hope is that we make this move sometime next year. And uh, once this major shift came over us and we got over our selfish thinking and just the whole retirement 2017, we just gave it to God. And we pray with him every day and we just pray he guides us and gives us wisdom. And he's opened so many doors that, you know, like Aaron and Sydney know our story. And we just are so excited that every time we pray about direction of how it should unfold, he's just been behind us. And we just look forward to expanding his kingdom in Belize and 
learned to have faith in God to trust his plan. And by plugging into the church over the last few years, we wrestle with the holiness and happiness, but we're actually very excited to go and serve God. So as we wrap up, you see our faith story is really still to be continued, just like each of yours, though. And like Val and I, our hope is that as you follow Jesus, you will also have more clarity on how God can use you and make a difference and expand his kingdom.